Good morning, Angela Yee. Hey, fam. What up, Charlemagne the God? Peace to the planet. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? Hump day? <laughs> yes, it's Good Wednesday. Morning. Hump day. Toronto, what up? Good morning, guys. How y'all feeling out there today, huh? Toronto probably happy because they uh, watched the Clippers lose last night. Uh, I saw a bunch of people saying Kawhi should have just stayed in our country. Kawhi should have just stayed in the six. Kawhi should have just stayed in Drake's land. So they're probably happy this morning. Yeah, he, I mean he wanted, you know, he wanted to go home. It was, what is it? Uh, what's the series at now? It's it's. The series is over. The series is over. Tell the Nuggets beat the Clippers 104. Yeah, I didn't see the game last night. I fell asleep. I seen the Heat game. Yeah, Damn it. Clippers, the Clippers, Weren't the Clippers, the Clippers lost last night. at one point? But it was going to be everybody thought it was going to be the Clippers versus the Lakers. They thought the Clippers were going to win. Wow. I, I tell you one thing, boy. People cannot wait to see you fall on social media. My God. It's almost like they've been waiting to say something bad about uh, Kawhi cool. Leonard. But, hey, at the end of the day, remember one thing. Kawhi Leonard is still Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard is going to be a OK. Okay, I ain't just talking about financially. I'm talking about as a professional basketball player. Absolutely. If y'all think Kawhi Leonard, if y'all think the Clippers, you know, not eventually going to get over this hump, y'all are bugging. Yeah, I seen the Heat game sports, last night, and then I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Athletes get it. When it comes to sports, man, athletes get it bad. Every time you lose, Yes, they boy. do. Yes, yeah, they do. Are always the but, that's, but that's why they get paid the big bucks. Like, yeah, they, they're I on mean, the biggest expected. stage on the world, and they got to take that. They got to eat that. It's expected, but it'd be all these people that can't play the sport weighing in. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy how, how they do. You know, when you think about how why they get paid, we talk about their physical gifts, but your mental and emotional gifts have to be just as strong just to be able to endure all the criticism, the goddamn perform night after night. You know what I'm saying? While people coming at you in that way, mm -hmm. that that's takes a lot. Have, that's why people have burner accounts so they can respond the way they really want to. That's why people have therapists so they can go there and vent. <laughs> <laughs> You know how hard it is when people are talking crazy to you on social media and you're like, okay, I can't say anything, but you really, really want to? No, you can't. You can't. You just can't get, it, get let it get to you. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things. That's easier said media. than done. No, nah, it was, it's, at, at first, it's like, y'all want to, you want to clap back at everybody. But then you realize it's a bod. It's probably some fat dude that can't play basketball sitting on his couch drinking a beer. You know, you, you realize that. Or it's some nerd that never was cool and never could play basketball or never could, you but know, But that do don't mean sometimes you don't have a day where you feel like, all right, this is too far. Everybody has those days where they feel I like... like yeah, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, man, you know, um, I hate it, but I actually love it because at the end of the day, the only thing that can kill them is success because you got to understand go. people going people going to talk about you regardless. You know what I'm saying? They're going to talk about you whether you're doing good. They're going to talk about you whether you're doing bad. So you, you might as well just give them a lot of good stuff to talk about. So there you go. They just sound like, they just sound like haters when you win. That's, That's all. a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Front page news, what we talking about, Yeezy? Ooh, well, Donald Trump had a town oh, hall with ABC yesterday, ABC News. And we'll give you a couple of highlights. All right. We'll get into that next. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> E, Charlemagne the Guy, we are The Breakfast Ooh. Club. Let's get in some front page news. Where are we starting with? All right, well, let's start with Donald Trump and his ABC News town hall that happened in Philadelphia last night. A lot of things went down, a lot of quotables from there. Now Donald Trump talked about police reform and weeding out the bad apples when it comes to the police departments. If we can do a plan like Tim Scott's plan, which is uh, really, it goes far enough, but it doesn't take the dignity away from our police. This is a very tough job, and it's a very unsafe job. It's a very dangerous job. These are great people, for the most part. There's always going to be a bad apple, so we have to weed out the bad apples. But we have to give the police back that strength. But if you look at the really troubled cities in our country, they're Democrat-run, and that's Biden. They're ineffective. President, you're president for those cities right now. I'm president, but I can only do what I'm allowed to do, George. Mm, police already have all the power, though. 
Like, how can you possibly convince someone that police don't have any power? People are protesting all around the country because police are abusing the power. Trump says they don't have. All right. Another thing that they discussed was that MAGA slogan. And by the way, these are people who are undecided voters asking questions. And this time they did get to ask follow up questions. So here is Donald Trump getting asked about MAGA. You say again, we need to see when was that great? Because that pushes us back to a time in which we cannot identify with such greatness. And I mean, you've said everything else about choking and everything else, but you have yet to address and acknowledge okay. that there's been a race problem in America. Well, I hope there's not a race problem. I can tell you there's none with me. But when you go back six months and you take a look at what was happening, you can't even compare that with past administrations. When you look at income levels, the best unemployment numbers they've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I hate the, I hate the MAGA slogan, uh, "Make America Great Again." I, I, I hate I hate I hate like a Biden. Slap in the face. It is. Yeah, I hate Biden's "Build Back Better" too, because we don't need to build anything back. We don't need to make anything great again because the system of America has never worked for everybody. We need a complete and total overhaul of the system. Period. All right, now Donald Trump also claims that he played up coronavirus. Why would you downplay a pandemic that is known to disproportionately harm low-income families and minority communities? Well, I didn't downplay it. I actually, in many ways, I upplayed it in terms of action. My action was very strong. Yeah, because what I did was uh, with China, I put a ban on. With Europe, I put a ban on. And we would have lost thousands of more people had I not put the ban on. Mm -hmm. So that was called action. I think he meant played y'all. That's what he actually did. He played. He played us in regards to coronavirus. I think that's what he meant to say. Two old men with dementia that don't know what they say and they they forget what they say. They don't know how they say it. That's what it seems like to me. Oh no no! Trump uh, knows exactly what he's saying. He just knows that he's lying. He don't care. <laughs> and she asked that question in response to this audio that Bob Woodward put out about Donald Trump downplaying coronavirus. Just to refresh your memory. Now it's turning out it's not just old people, Bob, but just today and, and yesterday some startling facts came out. It's not just old, older yeah, exactly. young people to plenty of young people. I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down Yes, sir. because I don't want to create a panic. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he didn't play up, he didn't play down, he played us. Sure. That's what he did. And he played the, the 200,000 plus people that died because of coronavirus because he want to play. Walk around all, right, all well, day playing. Debate- between Donald Trump and Joe Biden will take place in Cleveland. That's going to happen on September 29th with Fox News Sunday. And then the two are supposed to debate twice more after that, October 15th and October 22nd. And Joe Biden will have his own town hall with Anderson Cooper on CNN tomorrow, just an FYI. And later on, we will talk about Breonna Taylor's family and the settlement that they got from the city. But there's still no charges against these police officers. And we'll be discussing that this morning as well. All right. I think the, I think those debates are going to be embarrassing. I'm going to be honest with you because you can't debate against somebody Liar. who's just willing to lie. Go anywhere. Because <laughs> you, yeah, you're going to find win yourself defending things that aren't don't make even sense. true, that don't even right. make sense. Y'all not sticking to the facts in a debate. You should be debating the facts of a situation, the facts of a matter. They, you can't. You're not going to do that against a liar. All right, well, that's front page news. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, hello, who's this? Yo, what's good, MV? It's Rick. Good morning, MV. Good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning, Angela. What's up, Please, bro? Good morning. Get it off your chest. Yo, I just want to say good morning to the Breakfast Club. Good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning, Charlemagne. They should just start saying, shut the F up. Like, yo, shut the F up. Yo, shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> like, you remember when, you remember when Pinky caught uh, Ice Cube in the, in, the, in, the, in the record store and he was pointing the gun at him? They just should just tell him to shut up. Every time he starts lying, they should just blatantly yell at him to shut up. Because Trump is not there for the truth, bro. He just did yeah, the problem. And he just, and, and, and you can't deal with him like a, a, a normal politician. Like, you can't deal with him with dignity like how you would deal with everybody else. Because he's not doing that to you. He's just playing you in your face. I agree, but the problem with doing that is then they would flip it and say that uh, the people are being disrespectful to Donald Trump, and that would become the story. The, the story would become uh, Joe Biden supporters uh, tell Donald Trump to shut up over and over and won't let the president talk. But they flip on the story either way. Because if he's going to lie and say to you that he didn't lie, and it's clear, the story's been... I think we, we, we all taking this, this, this non-passive approach to him, especially Biden, 
He's taking this really passive approach to everything and hoping yep. that this docile approach is not going to work towards Trump. I agree. It's sad. It's sad right now that even though he's been so hypocritical this whole time, that people are still indecisive about who they're going to vote for. Right? I know. There's people dying in California. There's hurricanes in, 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 in Alabama, Mississippi, and all these places. And people still can't decide who they're going to vote for based on the fact that Biden has been so passive. It's horrible, man. I, mean, I agree. So I think I, I think it's, it's at least one time somebody should be like, yo, shut the F up. Shut up. I'm like how y'all, like, when I argue with my wife when I'm lying, she'd be like, yo, shut up. You know you're lying. Like, like that's that way. Like, <laughs> nah, listen. All right, thank you, brother. Hell up. I right. do agree that the, the Democrats' approach is too passive. And I, I, you, I think it, if, they, if they lose in November, that's going to be right. Hello, Why? who's this? Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Good morning. Get it off your chest. So I'm calling from D.C. I love you guys. Good morning, guys. Please, and Jessica. I wanted, to, I, I wanted to get it off my chest. The fact that you guys got ready to shoot your shot. You want us to bring back shoot your shot? Yes. That was a while ago. Yeah, that was a long time. I was getting in trouble right for now. shoot your shot. I'm going to shoot my shot. Drama. Okay. Oh, All right. Oh, Dramos. Let's do it live, wait, wait, baby. Hold on. Dramos who? Dramos Ramos? A border? Yeah, a border. Yeah. DJ yeah. Dramos, who does radio on, on several other radio stations. I can't believe yeah. Dramos set this up. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Shoot what do you know about Dramos? Hating Dramos. Beyonce hating Dramos. Okay, that just making sure we're on the same page with the right guy. Not sure. Go ahead, what do you Mama. like about him? I just think it's the beard, I think. The beard. It's Fake. The you know it's a weave. Okay, at least it's not pay eight. Woo. Pay eight. Ooh, watch your mouth. Go ahead, go ahead. I ain't gonna lie, Charlamagne sounded like a hater. Yep. What you look like? Go ahead, describe yourself. Describe yourself, mama. My Instagram is Jess, J E S S, Bri, B R I, underscore. Jess, Bri, underscore what? Howard Bri from New York. It's just Jess Bri. Your profile pic is with a guy. No, it's no, not. <laughs> Jeff okay, Bry. Jessica, you cute, you cute. J e s s b r y underscore. Oh, name is, is listening. Oh, she's a lovely up. black queen. Dramos. Hold on, I'm tripping. Uh, what, what, what is it? All right, let's see. J e s s b r i underscore. I mean underscore. Oh, Beyonce. Yeah, she's right. she's from the DMV area. Lovely black Jessica, queen. Jessica, I'm not going to lie. You could do better. Yeah, I think you could wow. do a lot better, Jessica. Okay. You Jessica, you could do a lot better. Oh, nah, Drum, you got to jump on this, Drum. Nah, yeah, Drum. Drum yeah. hung up on me yesterday. I would have called. I would have said it yesterday, but he hung up on me yesterday. Nah, Drum, you might be, Drum, you might be missing your blessing. This might be the one. This might be one of them times nah. where a, a good, a beautiful woman calls the radio station and you end up hooking up with her and, and being with her for the rest of your life. I'm not lying. Nah, you must give me trouble. Girl, you you just said you place. didn't have a girl. You I did not say that. I never said wow. that. You put these women wow. out. You just hung up on that black queen. You just hung up on that black queen. Don't make it like that. Don't even make it like that. As soon as he found out she was black, I'm trying to be a faithful right male out here and y'all trying to tempt wow. me out here. Though. Nah. So all of a sudden you, you have a girlfriend? Word. You just hung up on that beautiful black queen. You see, you guys are thinking something that's not. You see? That's fact. I don't know if she's black. Her mother's very pretty. No, she's black. Yeah, she's black. She's so she's like a beautiful me. black queen. Yes. He does? Wearing a profile? Yeah. Yes. You what? don't ever hang up on Trav when Trav flirts with you. You Trav never hang up with Trav. flirts with you? What are you talking? He never flirts with me. Y'all let him talk about okay, you. Okay, first of all, y'all are in relationships, so you know, let's not get the man in trouble. Exactly. He has a woman. Get you a black and you woman, guys, drop. guys, we gotta go. Okay. This is going on for way He's too long. He never said anything about uh, this woman. Oh, I thought he, he got was a single. Text. When have you asked me? <laughs> when have you asked me about this? Y'all be flirting with me. Don't, you don't ask me about my, my love life. <laughs> get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. Be careful, because if you're a beautiful black queen, dramas will hang up on you. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hello, who's this? Good morning. This is Bob from Tennessee. Hey, Bob, get it off your chest. Yeah, I'm getting tired of these black injustices. That um, Rihanna Taylor settlement. That's like Fred Hart being sp spitting in Vince McMahon's face. All right, take this money and shut up. Like the cops are still in the streets thinking that everything is cool and we could really start solving these problems by taking the law into our own hands because the legal system has let us down several times. Like, 
I don't have kids myself, but if Breonna Taylor was my daughter or my mother, that cop would not be here right now, and I would not be going to jail. People need to take advantage of the Second Amendment. Well, I don't, I don't know what you're encouraging people to do, um, but I, I don't necessarily, I don't agree with that at all. But I, know, I will say but this, the, the settlement, yeah. the settlement doesn't mean that the criminal case isn't still going to happen. Like, they still don't know what the grand jury and um, the attorney general, General Daniel Cameron, are, are going to do. But the city had no choice Daniel but Cameron to pay that money. I agree. Well, let's see. And, and you know what? And then in the next front page news, we'll talk about what Breonna Taylor's family had to say in regards to that settlement and pushing forward for some criminal charges. Yeah, thank you yeah, for calling. They're definitely not giving up on those criminal charges at all. Not at all. I actually think that the, the city paying all of that money just makes their criminal case even stronger. Because that's like paying a malpractice suit. Like, you, you're, you're admitting that something wrong happened. Hello, who's this? Yo, man, it's D. Hey, what's up, bro? Get it off your chest. Yo, man, I'm tired of wearing these masks because of uh, coronavirus. You said you're tired of wearing the mask? Yeah, because I got a co-worker, she was so fine, all right? But now that since we start wearing the mask, her breast is funky now. <laughs> Is it work? You know what? Some work? people have been telling me that the mask is making their face break out, too. Yeah, all kind of shit they're going on. Oh, I'm sorry, but all kind of things are going on since we start wearing masks. I understand we got to wear the mask because we're protecting ourselves, but... Got to. I think some of y'all just realizing y'all need a root canal because y'all smelling your own breath. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Charlotte, you might be right. That's what I think it is. Well, thank you, brother. Get it off All your right. chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now we got rumors on the way, ye? Yes. And let's talk about this hip-hop auction. We'll tell you what some of these items sold for online. All right. We'll get into that next. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk light skin Keisha. <laughs> All right, so have y'all been watching Power Book 2 at all, the first two episodes? I, have, uh, I saw the first I one. I didn't see the second one. Envy? Yeah, no, I haven't. I've seen the first one as well. I haven't seen the second one. All right, you got a show coming with 50 Cent, man. You better make sure you watch Power Book 2 so you can discuss it. That is very true. You should at least know your, uh, your, your, your partner's work. I didn't get to see the second one. I've been running around working. I got five kids. Well, and I'm moving. One of them you watching. Time to ride one, a one bike. of them is on the side of me right now. And one of them should be watching Power. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch with the kids. Hey. Take them on. Now, uh, good morning. Now, uh, good morning. Well, congratulations morning. to Light Skin Keisha. She was on the second episode of Power Book 2. And she said she got that role with no audition. It seems like it was kind of written just for her. And she talks about doing a table read and meeting all the celebrities who are on the show. Listen to this. Probably like a week or two ago, we all were like on a Zoom call for the cast members because we did a table read. I did see Mary in person and I started slick like having like a damn panic attack. <laughs> then I turn around and <laughs> Method Man walks in. Right. Then Lorenz Tate walk in and I'm like, and I'm sitting at the table like texting my boyfriend like, oh, <laughs> like I'm like, I'm having anxiety. I'm in here with all these little <laughs> legends. Like, I don't know what the <laughs> they just like, everybody's like, calm down, just chill. And I'm like, the whole time, nobody knows this though, but I'm like getting nervous. I'm going to have a nervous breakdown, but I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Let me pull it together. Let me go ahead and say my lines and turn up in this bitch. I love that when people can admit how how they fan out over certain people. Met the man, Mary J. Blige, and Lorenz Tate were all on this last episode. So imagine you get called in to do this role and then you get to meet all three of them. Yeah, that's pretty Those dope. Are icons. And I love the fact how 50 is giving people uh, opportunities to get into acting and get into the TV world. So shout out to Fifth. Now, but then why do you do these, block Tommy Lee? Did you ask him? No, I didn't ask him that. Do these, do these fake woke people get mad at Light Skin Keisha's name? Because her name is Light Skin Keisha. Do they say, oh, yeah, Rian Boston colorism and all that nonsense? Do you know why she calls herself that? Because she's light skin, I would assume. It's because after the character from Belly, Keisha, that was like her favorite character. Oh, so she's character. the light skin Keisha, she say? Right. Oh, so oh, okay, I get it. That's okay. why she calls it. Her name's not even Keisha, so... <laughs> Uh, so yes, that's that's where her name came from. So I think people also don't really know that. Hey, I'm gonna be honest and, with you, that don't make no sense. Salute to you, Light Skin Keisha, for that. Because <laughs> nobody no, called Tasha Dark Skin Keisha. But her I guess name even Keisha? I thought her name was Tasha. No, her name was Keisha. It's Keisha, yeah, it was Keisha. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's I what don't she, know she, Keisha. Oh, Tasha, Dark Tasha from Power. Okay, right. that's what I'm thinking. I don't know no Keisha. Okay. I don't know no Keisha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's where the name came from. So I think, you know, that's why she calls herself that to differentiate from Keisha from, and you know how people do that. They'd be like, oh, you know, light skin, such and such. Like, it just was I something. Ne- I'm going to be honest. Salute to you. I, when I think Keisha, I don't necessarily think Keisha from Belly. I don't think <laughs> so either. Yeah, right. Really but that's why, you know, she, and she's talked about it a lot, but that's just where it comes from. So she, tell, yeah, she is constantly explaining. Tell her zoom in one day. Yeah. I'll come in the studio. We'll be back in the studio soon. Come in the studio. Like, yeah, she's trying to come up next week. But I want to see some of these artists for the first time in person. Like, you want to see them. Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. But you know, she's in New York. She's in New York filming for Power, but I don't know if she can do stuff like that because you have to quarantine, then you have to be Mm. on set. And so I don't know that you can, like, go and be around people after you done did all that. All right. All right. Notorious. B.I.G., his plastic crown just sold in the auction. They have a hip-hop auction on Sotheby's, which is a interesting and, and big deal. And that $6 plastic crown sold for almost $600,000. Wow. Hold on. You're tra- you trying to tell me that plastic gold is selling for $600,000 nowadays? Wow. I mean, it's, that's... It's memorabilia. Monumental crown that he wore. He wore on his album cover, right? Yeah, he used it um, for a magazine cover shoot back in 1997. And the photographer, Baron Claiborne, actually lives in Brooklyn. He said, the crown is a novelty item. I bought it at a place on Broadway called Gordon's. And he actually uh, used that crown in that picture. That was a, you know, historical picture. He said, I'm not sure that I even paid for it. I was mostly shooting celebrities and reportage. I I did this because I like taking pictures of Biggie. The time before I photographed him in a white suit instead of the track suit that most rappers were wearing back in 1997. I can't believe people spending their PPP money on 600 something thousand dollar plastic crowns. It's memorabilia, though, you know, and hip hop should be right up there with all kinds of other memorabilia that Biggie right. wore. It's a That's a six dollar crown for six hundred thousand. I just think all plastic. Like exactly. Now, he said Puffy originally did not even like that picture or that. Uh, he said it made uh, Biggie look like Burger King, but Biggie didn't listen to me. <laughs> 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 and he said that's a testament to the charisma of Biggie Smalls. His power cancels out the fact that it is a novelty crown. Now, he also goes on to uh, talk about the photo shares. And he, people were saying he shouldn't go to California because of all the tension. And he said that Biggie did die from gunshot wounds three days after that photography session. Uh, that's horrible. Mm-hmm. Well, that's but there's still things that for... That are on sale right now. I was actually looking at that. Did you see what they had at the auction? They had all kinds of things. Um, they had a love letter, love letters written by Tupac. Uh, they actually had the salt and pepper jackets too. Those are going to be really expensive. That's dope. But I saw a bunch of different things that they have for sale at that auction. The salt and pepper eight ball jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, listen, I love all of those people that we're talking about, but I'm not paying no six hundred thousand dollars for no plastic goddamn gold crown. That's just not happening. But would you pay six hundred thousand dollars for Michael Jackson's glove? No. Yeah. What about a Why? Wolverine something? <laughs> no. Wolverine ain't real. What about black <laughs> Panther? Re- if they're gonna really give me some adam- listen, if they're gonna really give me some adamantium and some uh healing powers, I'd pay six hundred plus thousand for that. I mean, I think mm-hmm. everybody would. All right. All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your Urban Women Report. All right. Thank you, Miss Yee. Now we got front page news coming up. What are we talking about? Breonna Taylor. Let's talk about Breonna Taylor's family, the settlement that they got from the city, and then we'll discuss what's happening moving forward. We'll tell you the comments that Breonna Taylor's mother, Tamika Palmer, had to say as well. All right. We'll get into all that when we come back. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Four, three, two, uno. Guy, we are the Breakfast Club. Now, the only thing about going back to work, which I'm I'm not necessarily wanting to do, is because I'm gonna miss my kids. This is the, like the first time in what ten years I actually get to see the kids go to school. Because usually we at work, so I don't get to see it. So I I, I love this aspect of it. But well, you're gonna still mm-hmm. see the kids. You're just gonna see the kids once you get home from work. That's all. That's gonna go to get back into that. Get back into that routine. That's yeah. All. Say good morning, everybody. Good morning. Say good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Say let's get in front page news. Okay. She does that better than you. Shut up. Why you got CDs in the house? My God. Why you got DVDs in the house? The same reason you're moving and you're pulling the things together, right? Oh. Yeah, oh. Oh. Hey, 
All right. The city of Louisville, Kentucky, they have agreed to pay $12 million to Breonna Taylor's family and also institute sweeping police reforms. That's a historic settlement for the family's wrongful death lawsuit. Now, as part of the settlement, they've agreed to establish a housing credit program. That's an incentive for officers to live in the areas they serve. Mm -hmm. Also, to use social workers to provide support on certain police runs. Also, they're going to require commanders to review and approve search warrants before seeking judicial approval. There will be other changes as well. Now, here is Brianna Taylor's mother, Tamika Palmer, speaking. As significant as today is, it's only the beginning of getting full justice for Brianna. We must not lose focus on what the real job is. And with that being said, it's time to move forward with the criminal charges because she deserves that and much more. Her beautiful spirit and personality is working through all of us on the ground. So please continue to say her name. Brianna Taylor. Mm. That's right. I don't know why people are acting like you can't uh, continue to still press for criminal charges just because, you know, they got restitution. They deserve restitution, and those cops deserve uh, to be charged. Absolutely. And, and I hope so. And again, no amount of money will replace Brianna Taylor. So Not at I, all. I know the family knows that. And the least now that can happen is there will be some police reform as well. Now, a spokeswoman for the mayor's office confirmed that $12 million settlement is the highest ever paid by the city. And according to attorney Benjamin Crump, they said that payout is historic and it's one of the largest amounts ever paid out for a black woman killed by police in the United States. It's sad yeah. that, you know, that, that, that they got that money because of that. But I'm, I'm happy that the family did get some money and I hope that they prosecute those officers. And I hope that somebody steps up and helps that family with with uh, investing that money so that family can work, that money can work for that family for long, 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 long times. And, and, and you know, as Queen Tamika Mallory said yesterday, you know, if they don't indict the police officers uh, who killed Breonna Taylor, at the bare minimum, at the least, they need to be fired immediately. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the mayor, Mayor Fisher, said the city is not admitting any wrongdoing in the agreement. <laughs> he said, I cannot begin to imagine Ms. Palmer's pain, and I am deeply, deeply sorry for Brianna's death until Freedom, which is Tamika Mallory's uh, social justice organization. They've been in Louisville protesting this whole time. That's they've right. been staying there. They've been pressing mm -hmm. uh, politicians there. They've been pressing the local officials there. And they said no amount of money will bring back Brianna Taylor. We see the settlement as a bare minimum you can do for a grieving mother. The city isn't mm -hmm. doing her any favors. True justice is not served with cash settlements. We need those involved in her murder to be arrested and charged. We need accountability. We need justice. Yeah, I think they think that that money is going to pacify um, the people Hell on the no. ground, but it's not. It's actually, it's actually going to turn them up more. And uh, I, you got to drop on the clues bombs for Intel Freedom and everybody on the ground in Louisville, Kentucky, trying to get justice for Breonna Taylor. And that goes back, you know, to what I say, yo, we don't even have the power to get the people who kill us mm -hmm. fired. Okay, like we're just we're just we're just trying to get them. We nonetheless trying to get them arrested. We can't even get them fired when they're yeah. admitting to like uh, malpractice by giving out this twelve. And being too messed up. And being Come messed on, up. Man. Absolutely. Jesus. One that's officer, right. Brett Hakinson, was fired in late June, but the other officer is unfortunately not. Now they are still. A grand jury has been in panel to investigate the shooting. An announcement has not been made about those proceedings, but I expect that announcement should be coming sometime soon. They said, uh, my office is continually asked about a timeline regarding the investigation into the death of Miss Brianna Taylor. An investigation, if done properly, cannot follow a specific timeline. Yeah, I wonder after all of this time, it's been like six months and, you know, things have just been building up, building up, building up. I wonder if they, you know, uh, put the money out there because they know that they're not going to indict these cops and they don't want any, any, any violence. They don't want any, any, any riots because of it. But... There is a saying, no justice, no peace. So I don't know. I don't think it's going to be good if they let those cops off. And I think it's amazing. People always talk about, oh, well, what difference does it make? All that protesting, rallies, marches, it doesn't do anything. But no I matters. do not think the family would have even gotten this historic settlement if it wasn't for people on the ground there in Louisville Absolutely. doing this work. So that just really goes to show you how you have to put pressure on people and things can happen. So continue to put that pressure on. All Absolutely. right. That is your front page news. All right. Now, when we come back, we're going to be kicking it with comedian and actor Lamarne Morris. All right. So 
We're going to talk to him when we come back to Don't Move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest on the line right now. Lamar Morris. Welcome, sir. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? I want to say, man, um, I don't think you get enough credit. Uh, I, I, I salute you because I remember way, way back in the day when BET had its New Faces campaign. And literally, it was like a class of New Faces. It was Terrence J, Roxy, right. my sister Alicia Renee, you, and uh, J- Jaleesa, if I'm not mistaken. That, that was, was the cat. five. It was a cat named Shane Man, and Jaleesa was right before us. Yeah. Yeah, it was that, that was it, a and it seemed like you were the one that was, like, trying to find his way in that whole situation. It was kind of using you on, like, just the new hits from the streets type guy. And, yeah. You know, just like, I didn't, I, I didn't get it at the time. And then it's just like, yeah. you kind of just disappeared, but then reemerged in a huge way. So, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was, uh, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing either, to be honest with you. That was, uh, I, I didn't. I'd never been on TV before. I just did the audition, and I was, everybody was more so, like, trying to get on 106 in Park or Rap City. But I couldn't do, either, none of those were my bag at all, uh, being a weird left-to-center type of comedic individual. So I remember, I remember doing a lot of different weird sticks on BET. And then Reginald Hudlin, on one hand, who was the boss, would tell me, yo, that's funny, keep doing that. But then Stephen Hill would say stuff like, yo, that's whack. Black people don't want to hear that. <laughs> so I didn't know which lane I fit in. So I was just kind of coasting a little bit. Yeah. So what was the exit like? Like... Ooh, the exit was aggressive, man. I look, I so I had this show called BET Now, which a lot of people don't want to admit to, but we our ratings were better than 106 in Park <laughs> at one point, and you know, and so I remember wanting to, I have to I had to pass on a couple movies, uh, a couple like national commercial campaigns because of the BET schedule. So I said, can I move to LA and still do my show? And they said yes, but when I moved to LA. I remember getting all these calls like, hey, we have a meeting. And I'm like, where's the meeting? And they're like, oh, it's at 57th and 10th. And I'm like, I ain't no 57th and 10th here in L.A. <laughs> like, no, it's in New York. So I had to keep flying back to New York for these meetings I didn't really have to be in. I was like, yo, what's going on? Y- y- y'all know I moved to L.A., right? And they go, we didn't tell you to move to L.A. And so then I wow. quit. You know what I mean? So I just had to quit cold turkey, went broke, um, you know, in and out of my car in L.A., at the same time, I wasn't given any leadway to to do other stuff. To remember being on the bus one time, and I remember this girl going, "Hey, can I get a picture with you?" And it had been like a year and some change for anybody to recognize me. I used to walk down the streets all the time, and nobody, you know, I just looked like a random dude walking down the street. But then this the the, the girl asked me for a photo, and then her boy was like, "Yo, that ain't him, stupid. Why would he be on the bus?" And when she said that, that that was like, I was like. Man, I was like, oh, this is that moment where you can write it down in the book. December 4th, I officially fell off, you know. So, <laughs> uh, so then I got, I got the audition. It was for a Miller Lite commercial. I just started making stuff up because I lied and said I read the script and I didn't. And I started making stuff up and they, and they were like, oh, he's good at improvising. So let's book him for the commercial. And then I'd done seven nationals that, that week. And so that made me feel like, oh, I, I, I'm here. I, I should be doing this. I'm not, I didn't make a mistake. And then when I booked New Girl, um, New Girl in, in, in 2011, I want to say, that was it. That was the big break for me because at that point then you're financially fine, you know, you're, you're visible every week and then you have opportunity and space to do other stuff. So that kind of led to other movies, Barbershop, Bloodshot, you know, so on and so forth. Well, now let's talk about the new show on Hulu, Woke. And so how long has this been in development before it made it to television? I love to hear these stories about what happened behind the scenes before we got to see the product. Oh, man. So this show, they, you know, it's based on a guy named Keith Knight, a real dude who he's a cartoonist. And he's kind of he's kind of a lot like me in that he's just, you know, kind of a nerdy dude, you know, would, didn't really know where he p- had his roots politically you know he was just kind of walking down the middle would keep his head down just do his work and then go about his day hang out with his friends or whatever so that that was based on him in the 90s and then cut to you know a few years ago he started developing this idea with a bunch of with with a couple producers and stuff like that to talk about his life 
Uh, I didn't get the call till two years ago. Two years ago, you know, I read the script, you know, jumped on board. And like I said, you know, I, I, I leapt at the opportunity to do it just because I've been always trying to figure out how I fit in just any any place. Sometimes I feel like a mixed kid, you know what I mean? Where you like, yeah, I got this side of my family, got this side of my family. Like, especially comedically and acting wise, you know, I get these roles all the time that sometimes you read the script and I'm like, man, I gotta play, I gotta play corny again. Like, all right, all right, I get it, I'll, I'll do it. It's fun, it's paying well, so I'll do it. But then you don't get that respect from, from, from both sides. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you're choosing sides with certain characters. And that's the same way it was for him. So I was always trying to tell that story and I didn't know how to write it. I would write scripts trying to describe my journey and what it is I'm going through as a black actor. Um, but it, it just never translated. Until I read this script, I was like, yo, that's, that's me right there. You know? And I'm finally trying to figure out a way out of this... I guess laziness of not studying, not understanding who I am, not understanding uh, the type of work that I want to jump into. And uh, like I said, man, this script right here, this show, if you guys haven't seen it, it's, it's dope. It's uh, It mirrors my life, but in a, a different medium. His medium obviously being art and, and cartoons and mine being acting. But you can really relate to your character in Wolf. Man, absolutely. Like this guy, there are moments... There, so it couple things. There's one part in the show where he's uh, Sashir Zameda from SNL. She said to him, you know, I said to her, I said, why is it as people of color do we always have to stand for something? Stand, stand for something saying? in our work. Yeah. yeah. And then she's like, because the world's a racist f- place. And I'm like, oh, that's why I keep it light. Yo, that's, that's literally how I used to, that's, that's what I used to do. Like, all the time. I remember uh, I remember like doing barbershop and I'm not going to say who said it, but she goes, <laughs> she goes, you sound like a white boy when you talk. And when she said that, I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? And why you did that to you, bro? Nah, 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 nah. Look. Oh, it was that, okay. Well, uh, Nikki, well, I, Nikki, I, Nikki, oh, so you sound like a white boy when you talk? Come on, damn. Man, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if she said it. I don't know who said it. My eyes were closed. I don't see color. Yeah, I, don't um, color. <laughs> yeah. I don't see color. I don't see color, guys. No. So, um, he said it. it. Just made me realize something because I, I, that's something that I, that's something that I used to hear all the time. My cousins used to say it. My uncle used to talk about my jeans all the time. You know, he used to call me white boy jeans and try to pull on my jeans. Like, and it, you know, and I'm talking. I'm talking. I was born on the south side of Chicago. Your jeans. I don't know. Apparently, they were too tight. Apparently, my jeans were too tight. This is when jeans weren't supposed to be too tight. So I'm I always, you know. Uh, so I don't know, man. That's just that was just been my journey. So I could definitely relate to the character um, and those same. I'm talking even down to the dialogue in the show, just like how you see it. You know, that's stuff that I've said before. You know. Well, like your character in Woke, have you ever had an experience? Because you said you were very much like, you know, I'm gonna keep it light. Have you had an experience that was life altering that made you realize that? It's not that, that the world isn't what you thought it was, and you all of a sudden had to become woke. Had to become woke. A, a bunch of times, <laughs> you know, a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. I was the type of person that it would happen, and then I would go, "Damn, that's messed up," and I go back to my regular way of living. Then it would happen again. It was almost like God kept saying, "Hey, man, I'm trying to tell you something. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you activated here, or at least read more, or at least understand where you come from more." Uh, I there was a time back when I was 18. I remember doing my first gig. And I had to do, I had to play this, this dude in a band. It was like, it was called an industrial video where, you know, you teach an organization about something like sex, sexual uh, assault or whatever in the workplace no, or sexual harassment in the workplace or city eating or you're doing all these things, stuff like that. But I had to do one for kids. It was like trying to promote healthy eating. And I played the leader of a band and I was the only black dude on set at all. Like the cast members were all white. The crew was all white, and I was the only black dude. And I was 18, and I remember playing it, and everyone's me mugging, and I'm doing this too with the with the guitar. And the, the director, she's going, smile, Lamar, smile. And I'm looking around like, ain't nobody else smiling. Like, why is she trying to get me to smile? So I'm doing a light grin like this. And she's like, let's see those teeth. Let's see those teeth, Lamar, and smile. And then now, now I'm looking at her, and she's like, smile. And I was like, yo, like, I, she literally started looking like the devil to me to the point where I started getting worried. I was like, well, I'm, so I'm like doing all this. And it took me back to the old minstrel <laughs> show days where I'm like, why are you, you know, playing like, banjo just now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to play 
play either one. I was like, all right, cool. So then I, 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 this is not a joke. I stood up, cut, I stood up, walked away, and instantly start crying. And I was like, man, this is what those old dudes at church be telling me about. Like they, cause we, when I was in high school, I moved to a white neighborhood and I was like, oh, it's all good. All my friends are cool. And they would say stuff like, man, you know, just be careful sometimes with the older cats. They might, you would make you feel a certain way. And I didn't believe it. And when she said that, I started realizing that subconsciously, every time I walked past a white person, I started, I would smile and make sure they felt safe and to make sure, you know, I was helpful. And I call it, we call it the magical Negro syndrome, where you're like, you know, just want to make everybody feel cool. Non threatened. Like, hey. Non threatened. I'm, you know, then every photo shoot I would do for projects, TV shows, stuff like that, they always tried to give me a smile a lot. And I was like, man, I just feel like I look a lot cooler without it. You know, I got these gaps in my teeth. Let me get them fixed first. Let me do, let me figure some stuff out here. They're like, no, smile. And that's, that was one of the things that I started realizing later on in my life. Like, man, I've been doing that my whole life. Like, I've been, like, we're not allowed to have bad days sometimes, it feels like. You know what I mean? Like, if we in a bad mood and we walk past a group of white people, we got to smile just to make sure everybody feels okay and, 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 and safe. And then, I, and then I, that hit me later on in life. I was like, man, I can't keep doing that. You know what I mean? And then, you know, random routine stops by the police. In your when you walk into your own car, you know what I'm saying. Wear, literally wearing a suit, and they pull you, throw you on the car, frisk you, do all that stuff. Ask your girl whose car it is. Do the whole, you know, searching your car when you're not even in the car yet. You're just walking. You know that happened to me. I was leaving a show, and I was wearing a straight up suit. Me and my boy both wearing suits, both black. Threw us on the car, did a whole thing, and then was te the older cop was teaching the younger cop how to do it the proper way. You know what I mean? While my face is sitting on there, he's mashing my head down. And, and then they were like, okay, y'all good. And then just left. And we like, wait, what? Wow. Like, you know, you tell your older cut, and they're like, oh, man, that's every day. Wow. And I'm like, so you moved out of Southside. That's every day, dog. Do you think the smiling um, has more to do with, with us just trying to survive as opposed to trying to make them feel comfortable? It could. It could because... You know, when they, it, this could be subconscious. Now, I'm not 100% sure if what I'm saying is accurate because when they smile, we're less likely to be harmed. If you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? You know, you look at, you look at the, 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 the Karens in the, in, the, in the park, you know, it's talking about, oh, there's a black man, he's doing this. He's about to, he's, he's black and he's going to harm me and he's attacking me. You know, that same black dude, probably was smiling just to be on the safe side, just because he probably knew that was coming. I'm alone in the park with a white woman. Let me make sure I'm, hey, I'm taking pictures. Let me make sure I'm good. He's only doing it just to make sure she don't trip out and say something. You know what I mean? That doesn't happen all the time, but we definitely see it does happen. So that's something that definitely goes through my mind in those scenarios. You know, occasionally you walking down a dark street and you see a white person walking, across, walking, walking up the street, Sometimes you might slide over a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you might show your hands to just so let you know, like, hey, don't call the cops on me. It doesn't happen all the time. Again, it's never happened to me with that, you know, the situations with the Karens or whatever. That, that hasn't happened to me. But I've seen it enough and it's happened to enough people that I know that, I'm, that I just, you just brace yourself a little bit. Another thing that you have in the show is something that we see all the time in media where they lightened your skin, right, to be <laughs> <laughs> for this event. And I guess that's the yeah. way of making you, I don't know, more marketable. But then mm -hmm. when you're not allowed in the building, they darken your skin when it's more yeah. like a warning, do not let this man in. Mm -hmm. So the skin tone thing, like it's uh, if you're brighter, then somehow it's more acceptable. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even sure where I root back from. I feel like y'all probably know y'all are more uh, <laughs> historically versed we in that situation than me. Oh. oh, well, I mean, we're probably the same age. We're probably around the same age. Yeah, but we see like, it on, like, the covers of like, magazines. Smarter than me, like, you did this know? Person, when did this person become so light? Why did they lighten her mm -hmm. image on the cover of the mag? And oh, then yeah. they'll be like, oh, it was the lighting, it was the makeup. But no, yeah. My camera's doing made. it to me right now. My oh, yeah. doing it to me right now. Evan, you are super light. Like, I don't know how you go outside biking in the sun and you still are so bright. <laughs> you are bright, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> 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 oh man, yeah, you see it all the time, man. You see, it. and to be honest, that's happened to me a few times. You know, and that's mm -hmm. not necessarily on the lighting side of things, but more so on the Photoshop side of things, where you would see like there is a photo shoot. 
that I remember, t- I remember just looking just like a relaxed face in the photo shoot. And I remember uh, one of my castmates was joking around. He starts sticking me in the ribs. He was behind me taking a picture. And he kept going like this. So I went like this. I'm like, like that. <laughs> And you then they took like, the, what? like what? Nah, nah, you ain't screenshotting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, when he did it, I, I did one of those. They took the picture, and then they they took the picture. They took that smile like this. It's not a joke. Lifted my face, put it on a different head that I had. And when I saw the picture, I was like, "You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> you gotta be kidding me!" They're like, "We couldn't get you to smile, so we had to use that one." I was like, "Man, this is the candid shot." The candid shot. A lot of this reminds me. Uh, I, I remember there was an episode of New Girl when they was trying to make uh, make your character feel more comfortable being surrounded by white roommates. Yeah, and you had to explain that you didn't lose your blackness by by being there. Do you have to do that like yeah. in, in real life to like your family and stuff? Uh, yeah, you know, you do a little bit, a little bit when you like my cousins, they just they they do it as a joke. Like they do. You know what I mean? They always making comments or remarks and stuff like that. Uh, but it's nothing too serious, man. I remember uh, uh, I remember a, 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 and this, this happened in New York. This happened when I lived in New York. This girl comes up to me and she was like, yo, you funny and shit. But like in the hood ain't feeling all that corny shit you be talking about. And I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and so this is no joke. Like for the re- for the rest of the for the rest of the night, we was I forget what club we was at. For the rest of the night, I was <laughs> I was trying to act so out of character. I was trying to, I was trying to fit in so hard just so I could be like, "No, she don't know what she's talking about. She don't know what she's talking about." So I'm standing on couches. I'm standing on tables. I'm pouring alcohol on people's faces. I'm like, "Yo, this is not how I behave. Why am I? Is this what she was talking about?" <laughs> It does not work for me. It does not. I'm trying really hard, man, but it doesn't work for me. Uh, so, yeah, Tazi, you can prove yourself, but at the, at, at, that's another reason why I like the show is because it's not necessarily about black is not, black, black is on a spectrum. Mm-hmm. And people think right. that if you're black, you got to be one way and that's it. And mm-hmm. so another thing, another thing that I like about the show is that it's not just showcasing the, uh, the aggressions, the microaggressions, if you call it, that come from white people, but it also, it also comes from within sometimes, within our own communities where, you know, we're supposed to feel like, you know, we, we need to fit inside of this circle in order to, to get along. And, and I'm like, and I tried, I used to try, I mean, again, I'm from the South side of Chicago, but I moved to the Burbs when I was 15. So I got a little bit of both. And I'm like, I'm just who I am. You know what I mean? And, uh, and a lot of kids are out there that I like me, uh, you know, a bit nerdy, a bit weird sometimes. Like, you know, you should just be who you are because that's the strongest version of yourself. We talked earlier about, you know, having to stand for something in your work. When you was on New Girl, they, they, they let you write an episode addressing police brutality, though, right? Yeah, they did, man. That, and that came from, you know, I, I love buddy cop films, right? Those are my favorite films, like, you know, 48 Hours, Beverly Hills Cop, um, and so I, and Rush Hour, stuff like that. So I, w- I always wanted to do that, you know? And when I was on New Girl, I was like, man, we, we getting later in the years here, and, you know, the movies that I get outside of it don't mirror what I'm doing on the show. They usually mirror, I mean, they mirror usually, like, the silliness of the show. So... My character was jobless. He was jumping from job to job to job, and I was like, okay, "Here's what we're not gonna do. Um, I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play a, 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 a black dude on a show with no job, like constantly. That can't be my storyline. So I was like, I want to play a cop in hopes that maybe I can keep keep that narrative going. Maybe jump in like a police academy type of movie or something like that." And but I did. Everything was all good. It was just silliness. It was just goofiness. Me running around, stumbling, can't use my gun the right way. I was like, okay, that's cool. But then, but then Ferguson happened, and then I started getting all these tweets because on the show I have a cat named Ferguson, and so I started getting all these tweets like, yo, how does it feel to play a black cop with a cat named Ferguson? And I was like, all right, I was like, man, I got like fifty of those tweets. So I was. Damn, all right. So I hit Liz Merriweather, and I was just disgusted at what I was seeing. Like, you know, at the 14th, first time we were visibly seeing on a more prevalent level police brutality. So I said, man, I don't want to wear the uniform anymore. Um, I'm not condemning cops. I just don't want to wear the uniform. I don't want to promote it if, you know, if this is what we're going through in real life, and especially if we're not going to address it on the show. So Liz, the uh, showrunner, was like, you can write it. So we, we sat down, wrote an episode of it, you know, and then, uh, and that was it. But we, you know what's crazy about that is that 
I showed I showed what it was like to have that stigma uh, as being a black dude, right? And then I also show what it was like how how, how a black cop might feel, you know, in, in going through those moments. Man, I had so many police officers writing to me, telling me they telling me how much they hated me, <laughs> like uh, all kinds of stuff like that. I, was like, I didn't even I, I didn't even bad mouth y'all. Like I was just. That was just stating the facts. Like I was literally just stating the facts, and and it it turned into this thing. That was the first time ever in my life getting asked political questions when that's something I wasn't well versed in. I was getting you know CNN interviews and stuff like that, where just that's one of those moments that kind of opened my eyes. It wasn't the brutality itself; it was more so the reaction about what I was saying um, mm. that kind of made me go. Damn, people people really feel it some type of way on the other end. I'm like, we the ones getting shot over here. Like we the ones getting, you know, brutalized over here. I had my own experiences and still felt great about police officers. I didn't have a problem with police officers like that. I was like, you know, when those cops do what they do, like, yo, that's messed up. Like, you know, but I wasn't ever going like, let's burn this whole place down. That's never what I was saying. But I still got met with that reaction as if that's what I was saying. And that kind of messed me up a little bit. You know, but, uh, I, I appreciate y'all, man. This has been it's been an honor. I've always wanted to come on y'all show, so thank you. Next thank time, you congratulate, congratulations sure. on the show too. Woke, well, you can watch it on Hulu right now. All right, All sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, I'll see y'all. The more, more. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Breakfast Club. Good morning. What's happening? Now, hey, um, let me let me shout out to uh, Fifty Cent to um. I was meeting with 50 yesterday. I, we had a uh, shout to C's as well. We had a lot of different uh, deals on the table. A lot of people wanted to bring what we do to TV. And I wanted to do it as well, but I wanted to do it in a way where we can, you know, teach our community how to invest in real estate. Not just mm -hmm. do it, but show them how to do it and actually bring people on the show and show them, you know, when you purchase a house, what to look for and how to change the flooring and how to save money and roofing and all that. And we got a bunch of offers. And this is, the, this is the best thing about having friends in the industry. And this is what I tell people all the time. Uh, I don't know that space. I'm not, I'm not into the TV space. So the only two people I know in the TV space is 50 Cent and Charlemagne. So when it, when two it comes cancers. To, yeah, when it comes to TV, I reach out to them and I ask them for advice, as we should. That's what we should be doing as, as a community, as people. When there's somebody that does something and we need help with it, you should ask. Don't just jump out the window because you're like, no, I'm not asking nobody for help. That's not what I do. So that's what I did. I Trying partnered up with uh, 50 and we partnered up to, to do something great and hopefully we'll be on TV by uh, the beginning of next year, maybe even the end of this year. So hopefully. So shout to 50 Cent. I love to see it. Play together. Drive on the clues bonds for 50 Cent. I love to see uh, two black men coming together to empower each other. You know? Oh, you heard that? Ye? I'm black. He said I'm black. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> Yes, you okay. is this going to be on? Is this going to be on Stars also? Black and brown relations, black and beige oh, yeah. relations. I knew it. I knew it. I knew but, it. I knew but no, I love it. You know it. You know. Yeah, what network is it on, Emmy? Ask that. Uh, stars? Yeah, we're going to re release that in, in a in, in a little bit. But now, now there is something interesting. Can we say that? Uh, last night, uh, somebody did reach out from a certain network and asked me if uh, y'all had a channel. <laughs> And when I told Envy what network it was, Envy said the network told him that he wasn't black enough. Yeah, well, you can say it was, was BET. It. it was BET. BET. They said uh, you're not black enough? Yeah, BET when reached was out this, to Charlemagne. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm asked, confused. When did, what happened? I'm going to tell you. Oh, BET reached out to Charlemagne about uh, possibly doing the show on BET. And I started laughing because uh, a couple of years ago, you know, when my family was doing the show, we're still doing the show, but everything. But, you know, we went to, I tried to, what I tried to do is I looked out for my people first. So I went to BET and Revolt first, right? Because that's black owned, it's black channel. And BET responded, this was about five years ago, that, that uh, I wasn't black enough. Why are you mad at them for being correct? Drop on the clues bomb for those executives at BET. Don't you dare. Okay. Don't for, you for, dare. For, for, Don't you dare. For saying what I've been saying. Black, black people come in all decade. different colors and, 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 and different yes, we sizes do. and different, yes, and, and we different do. everything. But with the fact when they said I wasn't black enough, I was like, really? So what's black enough? You meant we you meant we weren't ghetto enough. That's what you meant in BET. Oh, and but, but those people at BET are no longer there. But that's what they meant. You weren't ghetto enough. Why? Because I don't sit here and, and throw chicken wings on the floor and do all the things that you expect me to Whoa. do in that ghetto oh and tell my, my kids all type of ghetto ish. No, I don't do that. But I'm still black, and I and I, I think raise my kids the right way, and I have the right investments and all that other stuff. No, we're not ghetto. No, no, we're stand up right now. Not black Let enough. Let me see your white jeans. 
Stand up, no white jeans on, man. I got on <laughs> shorts, man. I got on shorts, <laughs> man. <laughs> but they said you wasn't black. And like, and first of all, is being black a monolith? Like, don't they know that there's a whole bunch of different they types wanted, of? They wanted the hood, the hood. What you doing? That's what they wanted. But that's that's. But you say, but that's you said those executives aren't there anymore. Though. Now those executives aren't there anymore. Okay. And for a while, I just never respected BT because when they came back and said that, I was like, what did they expect? Did they want fighting? Did they want me throwing the kids somewhere? Did they want me and my wife arguing and beefing and screaming and, and yelling and at each other and cursing each other I, out? That's that's no. I agree doing. with All you. Right. I agree with you. But in some people's defense, they did think you was Dominican for a long time, bro. Like you is real. Like Shut you up. didn't do a good enough job. Shut you up. had the Dominican flag hanging behind you in the studio. Shut up. I man. wouldn't know. Just off first glance, I would not know. No, shut up. Everybody knows I'm black, man. Shut well, up. Yeah, or you could be oh, Afro Latino. And I've seen you lose yes. your mind to Despacito way more than Nuck if you buck. I'm just saying. No, you did not. Okay. <laughs> I, went to, I saying. went to Hampton University. I went to an HBCU. What are you talking about? Allegedly. Yo, was, shut um, up. Foreign exchange program. <laughs> Yo, shut up. So wasn't, there, wasn't, there a, wasn't there a white girl on um, <laughs> at HBCU? What show? A different world? There's a bunch of white girls. Oh, at yeah. White kids go to right. HBCUs. Yeah. So they, they got in on to go there. affirmative mm -hmm. action. I did not. I hate you. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got to go straight to rumors. Go. All right. Well, let's go. We, we're getting into the rumors now. Um, well, Let's go. Yes. So the view feels like the Breakfast Club should host some of these presidential debates. Here's what they said. I don't think we... I think we think we could do it, but we'd hear something we didn't like and people's heads would explode. <laughs> I, think they, I think everybody should go on the breakfast club and start That's with that cool. if yes. you want to shake it up yes. and, mm -hmm. and visit lots of different arenas. Charlemagne asked the best questions, that. but Charlemagne asked the best yeah, political questions so. of this entire cycle. But what does that say about our media? He's a very smart, I don't think he's a journalist, but he's a, he's a host. He's an incredibly no, astute he's host, not. but he's asked the best questions. Of, that's, what does it say about our political but, media? Well, it's, well, it says a lot. It says several things. It says that people who are not uh, political junkies also have really smart things to ask. I love people who have taste. Wow, mm -hmm. dropping the clues bombs for Queen Whoopi Goldberg and Meghan McCain. And I'm so glad folks recognize that I am not a journalist. I'm just a multimedia personality, radio, TV, podcast. I hate people who act like they are experts at things. That's how journalists act. Just remain curious. Once you start yeah, thinking, dope. you know, you know everything, you're not asking questions. Uh, you're telling someone what you think and just waiting on them to respond. So just remain curious. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a journalist. There's some journalists who do an amazing job at asking questions. I didn't say there's nothing wrong with being a journalist. I said, I said, you the said they think they know everything. They oh. do. And that's the problem with most journalists. The problem with most journalists, they think they know everything. So they tell the person they're interviewing what they think. And they just sit there and wait for a response instead of just remaining curious and asking questions. That's why what Megan McCain said is real. She was like, what does that say about the political media journalism nowadays? And Whoopi's answer was true. All right, Cardi B has filed for divorce from her husband, Offset, and they've been married for almost three years. So according to the filing, it is a contested divorce, which means that parties cannot agree on one or more of the issues involved. Now, according to the documents, Cardi does want to have, uh, and these issues, by the way, could range from custody to property division, but she is seeking primary physical custody as well as legal custody of culture. She wants spousal support. Now, after that report came out, Cardi did amend the divorce documents. She wants things to be amicable. She wants it to be friendly. She did not know her lawyer had filed documents that made it sound like it was contentious. So looks like they're trying to... Uh, work out things. Maybe the lawyer was trying to get whatever was best for her, but now it's been amended. Um, she does want child support according to the petition, but she does not want any support from Offset according to other sources. But the divorce That's petition says she sad. does. I don't know. That's super sad. I, you know, I'm, I'm praying for Offset and I'm praying for Cardi B. Uh, I know them both and, you know, I, I, I love their relationship. I, I hope that hopefully somehow, some way that they could work it out. Um, but I, I just love them together. Now, according to People Magazine, they are saying that this is due to rumors of his infidelity. So that's what People Magazine is reporting. Uh, they're saying that they found out from sources that Cardi B found out Offset had been unfaithful yet again. 
They are due wow. in court on November 4th to deal with whatever issues. Maybe they'll work things out before them. You know, they've had some very public issues and people go through the whole timeline of, mm -hmm. you know, him cheating her and her reasons of why she's decided to stay. She said, I know I look good. I know I'm rich. I know I'm talented. I know I could get any man I want, any basketball player, football player, but I want to work out my ish with my man and I don't got to explain why I'm not your property. This is my life. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to decide on my decision. It's not right what he effing did, but people don't know what I did because I ain't no angel. She had said that previously. You know, what's interesting. When the news broke yesterday, everybody was surprised about it. But mm -hmm. the first thing my girls all said was, I wonder who she's going to date next. Is that crazy? Oh yes, that, that is was crazy. the first thing. Yeah, that, 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 that's crazy. Like, because three different <laughs> friends of mine, the first thing they said was, who's she going to get with next, though, I wonder? She just got out of a three-year marriage. Who says that she wants to get with anybody? You know what I mean? I do wish both of them the best, though, man. Divorce sucks, you know, but both of them are young, and uh, they, they, they'll figure it out. And if it's not meant to be, it's just not meant to be. They'll be, they'll be great co-parents. Everybody was like, Cardi could kind of get anybody she wants. That's what I think the women were saying. So I don't even know what she's thinking know. at right now. She just I'm sure she's not, but I'm family. just saying that was people's initial reaction. And I'm sure a lot of people thought that initially. Mm -hmm. All right. Roy Jones Jr. says that he may have made a mistake in agreeing to fight Mike Tyson. So they are supposed to fight on November 28th in Carson, California. If you all recall, the fight has been pushed back. Uh, originally, it was supposed to have happened already. Now, Roy Jones uh, said, when it comes time to fight, we're going to fight. If it comes down to bite, we're going to bite. Whatever has to happen is going to happen. That's just what it is. He's still Mike Tyson. He's still one of the strongest, most explosive people who have ever touched a boxing ring. If anything, I made a mistake going in with him. He's the bigger guy. He's the explosive guy. He's going to have all the first round fireworks, not me. I do have first round fireworks, but he's known for more first round fireworks than anybody to ever touch boxing other than maybe George Foreman. That's all mind games. I mean, he's right about what he's saying about all mind games. Saying that you know, um, he 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 made a mistake getting in the ring with him. Mike ain't gonna fall for that. Neither one of them gonna fall fight. for that. He trying to sell fight, right? And then I, I I I don't think he feels that way. He knows what he's 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 ready to do. Right. Exactly. Roy Jones is a whole legend out here, just like Mike mm -hmm. Tyson is a whole legend. But let's be clear. I said it once. I said it before. Roy Jones is and has always been a better boxer than Mike Tyson. I don't care. You don't watch boxing if you think otherwise. Yeah, but you know boxing. It, 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 it could be one punch. You land in the right place that puts you on your ass. Man, they're 75 years old, both of them, okay? They are not 75 <laughs> years old. And they going to take much for either one of them, okay? <laughs> one right All shot right. to the liver and it's over. Now, Bow Wow has shared a freestyle about this alleged new son that he has, and here's what he said. Shot asking about a brother, I don't know what to say. No, that's going to be one of them talks that we have face to face. I'm looking in his eyes, I'm trying to see me in him. I'm peeping out in swag and I see the resemblance. Seen a boy three times, it's about what I like. Baby mom to bring him through just so we spend some time. Looking and if he mind, it's, you know, I'm stepping up. Kobe set that example. You know, I set my blessings up. Dare I say Bow Wow snapping? Dare I say Bow Wow is, 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 is barring up a little bit? Dare he I is. say? He absolutely is. That's not baby Bow Wow. Bow Wow, he, he's spitting over there. What about the message from his mother that's in this freestyle? Keep your D out of these broke hoes that want to be famous. <laughs> it's a great message from mom when your son is in the position Bow Wow is in. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Got to give it to him straight. Sheesh. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. All right. Now, don't forget, Ask Ye is coming up in a little bit. So if you want to uh, get your questions in with Ye, 800-585-1051. Now, Charlamagne, donkey today. I'm next to you giving that donkey, too. Uh, I need the Los Angeles Cowboys to come to the front of the congregation. We like to have a word with them. Uh, Clippers fans, I understand your pain. I am a Cowboys fan. I could talk to you. Uh, I could talk to you about how to get through this. All right. We'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Dog here today for Wednesday, September 16th, go to the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, I am a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, which is by far one of the most painful sports franchise fan bases to be a part of. Why? Because we have five Super Bowls, and in the 90s, when I was coming up in high school, we won three, so there was a standard of dominance there, a level of greatness that we felt and that I personally felt at an early age. So because of that, every year since 1996, I feel like we are going to win the Super Bowl. It's painful feeling like that, uh, you know, it's, it's painful feeling something and never, ever feeling that again for years. The only sports franchise fan base that can be a part of that 
or, or that can feel something worse than the Cowboys has to be the Los Angeles Clippers. Okay, the Clippers have always been the illegitimate child in L.A. If you have a daddy who's married to your mom, um, dad had other kids from other women, but you don't really know those kids. You see them every now and then, but you're not going to any of their monumental moments in life, and they are not coming to any of yours. You won't see them in any family reunions, and your biological mother is not playing stepmama to your daddy's other children. That is the Los Angeles Clippers, a.k.a. the Los Angeles Cowboys. Let me tell you something. Last night, uh, I know how Clippers fans felt. Number one, to be a lifetime Clipper fan in a city like L.A. that has the Lakers, uh, it, it, it means that you're, you're, you're not a follower. Okay, you move to the beat of your own drum. You have seen everyone going to the right to the forum or the Staples Center to watch the Lakers play, so you went left. Still went to the forum in the Staples Center just to watch the Clippers play, though. But I know, I know, I know this year was supposed to be different for the Los Angeles Cowboys because this year y'all landed one of my favorite players in the NBA, a man who I share the same born day with, 629, a cancer like myself. He's a beast. I know he's receiving a lot of slander right now, but let's not act like he's not a great Kawhi Leonard, okay? Y'all picked him up in free agency and automatically the fortunes of the franchise changed, or so we thought. Along with Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard, y'all picked up a man who last night shot four for 16 in a game seven. A man who in a closeout game has a career 12 and 13 record, including three and seven the last five seasons while averaging 19.5 points and 3.6 assists. Now, Kawhi needed a number two. OK, he needed a Robin to his Batman. He needed a Tails to his Sonic. He needed a Pippin to his Jordan. But let me tell you something. All of those characters I just named would have been a better partner to Kawhi last night than Paul George, okay, including a 54-year-old Scottie Pippen. Now, this is why the Clippers are—now, are, are, this is why we are getting to donkey here today, okay? All right? Do I think it's over for the Clippers? No. But I do know that this team was built to win now. Like right now, like in the bubble because it's a pandemic now. Why? Because they bet their future on the now. They gave up seven first round draft picks, including pick swaps for Paul George. They gave up, uh, what was his name? Danilo, Danilo Gallinari, who in 62 games this year averaged 18.5 points. Okay. And they gave up one of the best young guards in the NBA, Shai Alexander, who in 70 games averaged 19 points this year. Both of them would have at least showed up last night, but they had to do what they had to do to get Kawhi, I guess. I get it. I mean, it's Kawhi Leonard. You have to do what you have to do to land the big fish. But what does that say about your future? I mean, next year, the odds don't get greater for the Clippers to win a championship. They get worse. The Lakers are still going to be contenders. Uh, the Beige Brigade, that is the Golden State Warriors, led by Klay Thompson and Steph Curry, they're going to be back. The Mavericks with Luka, the Jazz, the Nuggets, all those young teams, they're going to be back with better experience. And there's nothing about those Los Angeles Cowboys that makes me feel like they will get any better this offseason. I really feel sorry for the Clippers. Y'all not even the Clippers the barbers use in the barbershop. Y'all the Clippers folks been using at the house during the pandemic. The Clippers folks cut their own hair with, you know, when you go online and have to pull up YouTube videos like understanding Clipper guards for beginners. That's y'all because nobody can understand why and how the Clippers always find a way to blow it. Is it the curse of the former owner, Donald, the segregation of Sterling? Could the basketball gods, uh, could, 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 it could be, could the basketball gods uh, not want to see the Los Angeles Scissors win a title during a year of the Black Lives Matter movement? Maybe. Do you think basketball gods were going to do anything to make Donald T. Sterling's heart smile? Absolutely not. In fact, I don't think the Clippers will be real contenders until Donald Sterling passes away. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are potentially a year away from free agency. Donald Sterling's 86. I mean, it could happen any minute, or he might got a few years left. I don't know how bad the Clippers want it, but if it's true the Los Angeles Cowboys won't be good until Donald passes, maybe someone can call Donald and ask him how much he loves the franchise. Huh? I, I, I know that feeling, too. I don't wish death on anyone, but I've been waiting on Jerry Jones to clock out for years, okay? It's okay. Doesn't mean you want someone dead. Just means you want your team to live. All right, the Scissors have never been to the Western Conference Finals in the 50 years they existed. 0-8 in games where they could have advanced to the Conference Finals. Zero, okay? Same number of points that Paul George and Kawhi Leonard combined to score in the fourth quarter last night. Zero, the number of Cinderius Thornwell, a former South Carolina Gamecock who played for the Clippers for a brief moment. Zero, the number of Negroes in Donald Sterling's will. I don't know what any of that has to do with anything, but when it comes to L.A.'s junior varsity basketball team, nothing makes sense. 
please give the Los Angeles Cowboys, a.k.a. the Los Angeles Scissors, a.k.a. the Los Angeles Clippers, the Sweet Shines and the Hamiltons. Yeehaw! All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day. Yes, man. All right. Up next, ask ye 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, hit ye right now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.